Good happy Monday evening. I'm Riley King, and welcome to the Riley King Newscast. Let's get started. First up, Manchester man charged in roommate's shooting held without bail. Let's take a listen to this video from WMUR News 9, Andy Hirschberger. Good morning, New Hampshire. Good morning, America. A lot of news to get to this morning. Thirty-four-year-old Jordan Gamage appeared with his lawyer by video this morning. He is facing a second-degree murder charge accused of shooting his roommate, 39-year-old Ryan Chapin, last week inside the apartment they shared on Douglas Street. The call, the 911 call, uh, did come into police shortly after 3 a.m. on Tuesday. As to the specific timing of the, of the shots being fired, that's not something I can comment on. Authorities say Gamash shot Chapin multiple times but are not releasing a possible motive and a judge has sealed most of the details contained in the court paperwork. So obviously the investigation is still uh, still ongoing, it's still uh, very active. Um, beyond that, I can't comment on the specifics in terms of where the investigation goes, but we'll continue to look into the circumstances of this murder. I looked at my husband, I said, something's not right over there, something's, something's not, something bad happened over there. Kathy Rolston says police knocked on her door at 4 a.m. Tuesday. She didn't hear or see anything out of the ordinary, but says she's been friendly with Gamash for years. Normal, very friendly type of guy, always quiet over there, you know, never had any problems. So totally, this is out of the blue, like totally shocked, kind of heartbreaking. You know, it's um, surreal. It's, it's disappointing. Kathy Rolson said that she really didn't know Ryan Chafin. Gamash is scheduled for another court hearing next month. Reporting live in Manchester, I'm Andy Hirschberger, WMUR News Now. Okay, and there you go on that report. Red Sox beat Pirates 5-3 to, to open 2017 season. Let's take a listen to this video from Mike Cronin. On a perfect spring day, Yawkey Way is alive again. The streets around historic Fenway Park filled with excitement over another chance at baseball glory. I've never been to opening day, so this is a bucket list, you know, event for me. Been down here a million times before, but this is opening day. This is the one you always want to come to. So this is a dream come true. I love the Red Sox. No big poppy, no problem, say the fans. They're confident in the team's young rising stars and returning veterans to lead the team back to the playoffs. No more David Ortiz, but we're going to be amazing. Christy Purrington was so excited, she flipped the script on me. This is uh, Christy Purrington from WMUR News, and I was just wondering, how do you feel about about this game today, the weather, the lineup? That's a great question. Thank you. Despite the disapproval of his daughters, Kevin Boyle is sporting the Pirates gear today. A good friend of mine works for the Pirates organization and has always been real good about getting us to, uh, to games whenever we can. The Sox are expected to be one of the top teams in the American League this year thanks to a prolific offense and what should be one of the best starting rotations in the game. They should do really good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're going all the way. Okay, and there you go on that report and that video. Tolls on I-93, other state roads, bill proposed dramatic change. A Massachusetts lawmakers filed a piece of legislation that could dramatically impact Bay State drivers. The Milford Daily News reported Democrat Rep. 
Brian Murray, introduced a bill Friday that proposed other routes into Boston like I-93 become toll roads with electronic generity. The Mass Pike would switch the electronic tolling into November of 2016 and is the state's only toll road. And if you live in the Bay State, let us know. I want to hear from you and let me know what you think about that. Coordinate arson destroy our see more trucks in Scarborough, Poland. Let's take a listen to this video from WMTW News 8 in Maine. And the judges are short. She smiles, so that's good. That doesn't mean anything. Sophia Grace, Toby, Alira, and Noah. I know toys on the back of my hand. It's like an old skull. Treadmill action. They'll decide which toy Mattel will sell across America. Modern Family's Eric Stone Street host. The judges have to go potty. We'll be right back. The Toy Box premieres Friday, April 7th on ABC. The investigation is underway here. The calls came in last night, three minutes apart, one here in Poland and one in Scarborough. I got a call about 8 o'clock last night that um, there was trucks on fire at both Poland location and Scarborough location. Six trucks targeted, four destroyed in what officials call a coordinated arson. To have uh, two incidents at the same company within minutes apart, uh, I can't recall anything even similar or remotely similar to, to what we're dealing with here. Officials getting the first call 8.16 p.m. in Scarborough from an employee. He heard crackling and then uh, opened, his, uh, opened the blind, saw that one of the trucks was on fire. The second, three minutes later in Poland, where these four trucks were left in a melted mess. These drivers leave their personal items in them, never have any vandalism or stuff stolen out of the truck, so it's quite a surprise. Company leaders now working with investigators to get answers. We're not quite sure why it happened, but uh, hopefully these people will get to the bottom of it. State police say they're looking for a gray car with a green door and a light on top. It pulled in here earlier yesterday afternoon. There was a uh, staffer from uh, one of the other businesses in here that went out to ask uh, what they were doing here, and, and it abruptly drove off. But they're not saying yet if it's connected. They're going to be reviewing these security cameras, the footage from them, to find out who cost the company almost a million dollars worth of damage. In Poland, Kyle Jones, WMTW News 8. Okay, and there you go on that report. Stocks close well off session lows, but still fall after economic and auto sales data. U.S. equalities fell on Monday, but closed well off their lows, while investors designated key economic and auto sale data. Senate Democrats have enough support to filibust Gorsuch. Senate Democrats now have enough support to filibust a final vote on President Trump's Supreme Court nominee Neil Gorsuch, and the move likely puts Senator Majority Leader Mitch McConnell in a position to invoke that so-called nuclear option. This option would change Senate rules to allow a simple majority of at least 51 votes rather than the current threshold of 60 to overcome a filler buster. And that does it for the Riley King newscast right here on the Riley King Network. I hope you all have a great rest of your Monday night. Good night, everyone. Bye.